Okay, and this is my second attempt. Obviously, you can see I've written some steps here, but I got an interruption, so I'm going to try this again, starting from the beginning. So this is the quadratic equation that we're trying to solve. In order for me to solve it by completing the square, I do have to have these two terms by themselves. So I took this 14 and moved it to the right side of the equation by minus 14 on both sides. Once I had the minus 14 on this side, I was able to figure out what I needed to add here to both sides to complete the square on the left hand side. So I took positive 10 over 2 squared, which reduced to positive 5 squared, which ultimately resulted in a 25. So I've added 25 to the left, added 25 to the right, and then the left side factors into x plus 5 squared. The right hand side simplifies to 11. Now I can apply the square root to eliminate the square. When I apply the square root on both sides, immediately that means I'm going to have a plus or minus um, value on the right hand side. So here to solve for x, I had to minus 5 on both sides, so I end up with negative 5 plus or minus square root of 11. Now I'm trying to uh, plug this in, and I'm going to use the positive version first um, to see if it checks out. So we have this, and then that means I'm going to have to FOIL this expression. And here I can distribute a positive 10, which will give me a negative 50 and positive 10 square root of 11. <clears throat> positive 25, negative 5 square root of 11, negative 5 square root of 11, and positive square root of 11 squared. Bring down the rest of the equation. So then I get 25 minus 10 square root of 11. Here that would just be 11. And bring down the rest of the equation. Then this term will cancel with this term and I'll end up with 25 plus 11 minus 50 plus 14. And that results in zero. So the positive version works out. Now let's try it again, but with the minus square root of 11. So again, I'm not going to redo the whole problem. I'm just gonna manipulate the signs that need to be changed. So now this should be a minus and a minus. And this, when I multiply that, there'll still be negative 50, but when I multiply this, it'll become a negative 10 square root of 11. Negative 5 times a negative 5 is positive 25. Negative times a negative is positive. Negative times a negative is positive. Negative times a negative is positive. This should be a negative now. And so then I get 25. That would be positive 10 square root of 11. That is still positive 11. Negative 50. And this should be minus 10 square root of 11. So one positive, one negative. This term still cancel. And I still end up with 25 plus 11 minus 50 plus 14, which as before is still equivalent to zero. So both answers check out, which means my solution can be written as this or expanded to this. Okay. Either one of these versions is okay. Just see if Alex actually has a plus or minus button so that you can type that in a little bit quicker. Okay, so we will be using completing the square more when we get to college algebra, but for now, what we need to worry about is the next method to solving a quadratic. And the next method is um, solving using the quadratic formula, okay? So before we can solve these two problems, we need to know what that formula is. And the formula is, if I have a quadratic that is in this, a quadratic equation that is in this form, then the solutions for x can be calculated just by using the coefficients of that quadratic.
And so this is the quadratic formula, okay? Now you do have the quadratic form in your note sheet packet, so you should be able to retrieve it from there if you're taking an exam. Um, again, of course, I've used it a million times, so I have it memorized. It's nice to have it memorized, but it's not necessary. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug in these values here. So at the beginning, when you're first learning this, it may be necessary for you to actually identify the coefficients before you start plugging them into the formula, okay? Um, this is not necessary either. You could just jump straight into the, um, the formula. But I, at least at the beginning when we're showing this for the first time, we like to identify those coefficients. So A is the coefficient of x squared. This is my x squared term, so my coefficient is a positive 5. B is the coefficient of x. Here's my x term, and so my coefficient here is a positive 7. And then C is my constant. However, my constant here is a negative two. So I need to write negative two for C. And then I'm gonna go ahead and plug everything in. Now actually I should have had parentheses around every single letter because when you plug in the values, it's always best to always use parentheses when you plug something in. So I get negative my B value plus or minus my B value squared minus four times my A value times my C value all over two times my A value. Now your calculator may have the functionality to do this whole thing. However, if whatever's inside the square root happens to result in a negative value, your calculator is just gonna tell you a big fat error. However, in the computer, it will expect you to keep simplifying that complex number. So I like to do this in parts, just to make sure that if I do have an imaginary, um, it kind of gets taken care of throughout the process. So this will become negative seven, and then I just figure out what would I get inside the radical. So in my calculator, I'm literally gonna type in exactly the way it is there. Seven squared minus four parentheses, five parentheses, negative two. And I get an 89 inside the square root which is positive, two times five is 10. This is a positive value, so this is not going to be an imaginary or complex solution, okay? But I do wanna to try to simplify this as much as possible. So let's see if the square of 89 simplifies at all. It does not. So because it doesn't simplify, then this cannot be reduced. The most you could possibly do with it is rewrite it as individual fractions like this okay but there's really nothing else more that you can do with it now if you wanted to you could go back in and plug it in to verify but as long as I didn't apply a square root on both sides of the equation it's not necessary to check your answers just hope that all of your arithmetic here is correct okay however you always have that as a default to plug in the answers for all the x values to make sure that the um, solution you have is correct. But for me, to save time, we're not gonna check it because I'm pretty sure our arithmetic is good here. So remember, if Alex does not have the plus or minus button, you do have to rewrite this as two different expressions. And so these are your solutions. So now I'm gonna do the same process, but we have a new quadratic, which means I'll have new values. So here my a value, the coefficient of x squared is positive nine. My b value, the coefficient of x is positive three. And my c value is the constant, which is negative one. So let's plug everybody into the formula. Negative three, plus or minus three squared minus four times nine times negative one over two times nine. So we get negative three. We'll figure out what's inside that square root and we have 18 at the bottom. So let's see, three squared minus four times nine times negative one. We get a 45 inside the square root, which is not <coughs> excuse me which is not 
a negative, so this will not result in an imaginary solution or a complex solution, but I do believe the square root of 45 can be simplified. And it does. It simplifies into um, 3 square root of 5. Now, watch what happens when I separate this fraction. 3 over 18 plus 3 over square root of 5 over 18. This does reduce. Negative 3 over 18 reduces to 1 over 6. And this 3 over 18, neither one of these numbers are inside of a radical. But they can reduce with one another. And I get 1 square root of 5 over 6. But again, when you have a 1 coefficient, it's not necessary to write that 1 coefficient. Oh, I did make an error here. This should have been plus or minus, right? And there's my two solutions. So we have negative 1, 6 plus square root of 5 over 6. And then we have negative 1, 6 minus square root of 5 over 6.